basic operation is drilling operation that makes the cylindrical holes and there are the further classification of drilling operation one is called as counter boring so initially you have to make one hole and then you have to make one recess which is larger diameter as compared to this diameter so this one is also cylindrical and this one is also cylindrical counter boring is a machining operation for enlarging one end of a drill hole without affecting any change in the central axis where axis will remain same the enlarged hole must concentric with the original one Counter boring is done to accommodate the bolt head, screw head or the rivet head below the surface so that it will get flush. Similar to counter boring we have counter sinking, same operation but in this case we can fit the conical type of head, so conical recess. The size of hole we are not disturbing, uh, original hole as it is, only recess is made, one is cylindrical and one is conical and then we have tree pining operation. In the tree pining operation, we are making a large holes of diameter more than 45 mm. And in this case, we have an annular cut. So this type of tools are used. Here, all of this plate can be saved and MRR will be reduced. In the case of drill bit, this one is called as shank, this one is called as fluid point angle, and this angle is called as helix angle. So there are fruits to carry the chips up from the cutting edges to the top of the hole or the fruits provide the space for chip to come out during the drilling and also provide the rake angle. Now we don't know the what is the rake angle now. So when we go for the machine circle that we come to know. So basically this angle is called as rake angle and equals to alpha and this one is your workpiece. Like the helical flute in a twist drill provide for the rake angle of the cutting edge and the space for the chip to come out during the drilling. And the helix angle of the twist drill is equivalent to the rake angle. The rake angle varies along the cutting edge or the lips being negative close to the point and equal to the helix angle out of the leaf. It varies from minimum near the dead center and maximum value at the periphery. Now you can observe here the number of floats. What you observe here number of floats are more when the helix angle is high and it is lowest when the helix angle is lower. So drills with a helix angle of 20 degree known as low helix are available with a point angle of 118 for cutting brass, carbon steel, bronze and with a point angle of 90 we can use for plastic. These are objective questions. Whereas high helix or the fast helix with an angle of helix angle of 40 and a point angle of 100 instead of 118 we are using 100 are uh, suitable for softer materials like aluminum alloy and copper. This total input angle is called as point angle. Standard you have to take if nothing is given you can take 118. So if you see this geometry then you can find here that this one is a diameter. This is a cone form. This is a tool bit. So this dimension is called as cone height. This one is called as half of a diameter. This one is D by 2. This one is cone height. This total angle is 2 beta. So this angle is beta. So H is called as cone height. So if you use tan beta, we get D by 2 divided by H. So we have cone height equals to D divided by 2 multiplied by tan beta. Beta is equals to 49 standard value. 118 divided by 2. So this one is our drill, this one is cone, this is job to be drilled. So we have a plate of thickness equals to T. We have a drill of diameter equals to, the job is loading with a speed equals to N. So we have cutting speed VC is same as 5 dn by 1000 is meter per minute. Tool is feed in this direction that is called as feed. So we have axial speed equals to F multiplied by N, F, F, mm per revolution. So this one is N, this one is unit is mm per minute. So whenever we have a tool and drilling operation is to be done, initially the drill is moved very fast from this point to this point and then you have to take some time, we are here now and then the drill is advanced very slowly then it touches. So how much distance it covered from this position to this position is called as approach. So
So this length is called as approach length. So in the numerical, this value is given to you. We denote this quantity by A. Now the tool has touched to this. Then the tool has to pass through this. If you come up to this position, the tool has traveled a distance equals to T. And still the drill is not passed through. This one is called as blind hole. Blind hole. And then it is called as through hole. We are blind and we are through. So you are here initially. So you have to first travel the approach. Then you have to travel the distance T. But the hole is not through. The hole is through if you cover complete cone. Now through hole. And again you have to travel little bit extra. That is called as over travel. So it means that the tool has traveled how much distance? From this point it has to travel this distance first. Then this distance. Then it has to come this cone height plus over travel. So it has to cover extra distance equals to what? Over travel plus extra distance of what? Cone height. So this is over travel. It will be present by O. And this one is cone height. That equal to H is diameter of the drill width divided by 2 tan of beta. By default, beta you can take as 59. So in fact, you have travel this total length that equal to L. So length of job is consist of approach plus thickness plus over travel plus cone height. So this time L equals to approach plus thickness of plate plus over travel plus H. So this formula remains same. You are travelling this distance with a speed equal to V axial. So you have to divide it by V axial that is Fn. Mm, mm cancel, your answer will be minutes. You can calculate this value only when you know the value of D. So you have to consider this if diameter is given. If diameter is given you can assume beta equal to 59 and you can find out it. But if diameter is not given you forget about this value. If approach is given, well and good. Over, over travel is given, well and good. This is not 0. Huh? This one is O. By default, they would take 2 mm and 2 mm. So as far as gate question is considered, they normally provide you choice. And choice you have to match according to this adjustment. So that your answer will come by standard formula. Neglecting A, neglecting O, neglecting H. That is first answer. If it is matched exactly, it's okay. Otherwise, Consider approach, consider over travel and height. Yes. Then calculate. If match, okay. Otherwise, try for the third op option. That is T plus H only. So, according to option, you have to match it. There is no fixed formula for it as far as gate is considered. Now, since you are making the hole of this here, only this material is removed. And this one is cylindrical portion. Volume of this one is pi by 4 d square into T. So, MRR is volume. It is equal to pi by 4 into d square into t divided by capital T. That is machine time. Machine time is t is equals to L upon Fn. So I, I have to write down this is Fn. This is also divided by Fn and this is equals to what? T. Now once you know MRR, then again you can go for the calculation of your specific energy. That you can do. Now sometimes for fast drilling, we are using multi point tools. That instead of one cutting, we are using the multiple cutting. So we have to write down Fz. Fz is feed weight per cutting edge. Z is equal to number of cutting edge. We will use the same formula for milling also. Z equal to number of cutting edge. This formula is for multi point cutting. Then we have F. F is given as feed for evolution. That is our conversion unit. So this value of F is Fz. Multiplied by Z. If you have two cutting edges, you have to multiply by two times. So what are the cheapest form in this case? Has the thickness given by feed divided by 2 into sine of beta by 2. Beta already is 59. Na? Half of that feed divided by 2, you will get cheap thickness. And if you find to, want to find out width of chip, that you can also find out diameter d divided by 2 into sine of beta by 2. So if you take the ratio of this, can you find out thickness divided by width ratio? Yes. So thickness divided by width ratio 
is same as fit divided by diameter ratio. So this uh, T1, T thickness, they are basically merchant terms are coming on this side. Chip thickness ratio. So you can use this calculation if he has given the fit per cutting edge. And he says that it's two cutting fit, so you simply multiply by two times for fit. So this one is a rimmer. Rimmer usually follows the drilling. The purpose is to remove and to get the exact hole, that is finish hole. Approximately 0 0.025 mm of the correct size and very high finish. MRR for this material is very very low as compared to drilling. And depending upon the shape, we have rose rimmer. Then we have chuck rimmers. So this part is fixed in the chuck and we have rimmer here. Either if the fruits are straight or the fruits are little bit given angles. Or otherwise we have shell rimmers. Then we have boring operation. So boring always involves the enlarging of existing hole. Calculation of boring are almost same except we have to calculate D average. D1 plus D2 divided by 2. And this formula is same as drilling operation. MRR will be the same formula that I use for turning. Because this time D average will not work. This answer will give wrong answer. Because the, there is a large difference between D1 and D2.